Hello. Good evening. Uh, big waves on the screen. <laughs> yeah. uh, welcome, everybody, to Matt Kamira's midweek whiskey gig. Uh, we're going to take you through a few bottlings tonight. Um, you probably recognize a couple of your faces if you joined us before on a Wednesday. So there's myself, Carl, uh, and I've got my colleague, Mickey, with me. Uh, you may also notice a new fresh face uh, who's joined us today, uh, Mr. Lawrence Rose smith uh, Give us a wave. And uh, yeah, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself, mate? And, uh, Hi, yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is Lawrence. I've been working in the hospitality industry for about a decade now with McMyra for about four months only. So I'm still <laughs> wet behind, fresh behind the gills with that one. That's cool. Um, but yeah, managing a bar in Leeds, loving life. Nice. Good stuff, yeah. So uh, he's got some really interesting cocktails for, uh, for as well later on today in the show. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned. We've got plenty of content for you today. Um, before we go any further as well, <clears throat> if you are watching us live, Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Um, got loads of videos on there already. There's a few videos where we're on, in them and a few with uh, other colleagues down south and uh, across in Sweden and Germany as well. So there's loads and loads of stuff on there to keep you entertained. Um, we do, uh, yeah, if you have a look at the bottom as well, uh, you can follow us on Facebook, macmira.co.uk, and then you've got Instagrams as well. Um, if you're watching along live, please feel free to drop any comments, questions, likes, anything you um, want to ask us during the show. Um, across the bottom. Uh, we'll try our best we can to answer them on stream. Uh, we've also got Alex, who's our little gremlin in the background doing all the technical stuff as well, so you can uh, you can answer all the questions for you. Uh, I'm sure we'll give me some jip uh, for calling him a gremlin, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, so yeah, so today we are discussing private brands. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, private brands essentially is a chance to uh, create something unique in partnership with Matt Mira. Um, so limited edition bottlings. Um, and today we're going to focus on bottlings from Milroy's of Soho uh, and the Whiskey Lounge. Uh, Mickey's going to tell us a little bit about that. Uh, we've also got a couple of exclusive bottlings from Scorpions uh, and Motorhead as well. Uh, and then Mickey, uh, sorry, Lawrence is going to take us through a few cocktails. Uh, and then we'll tell you about a few of our casts that are available for adoption as well. Um, so yeah, so private brands, unique releases um, from Mac Mira. And it's using our 30 litre all the way up to 200 litre casks. Um, so I've got a wide variety uh, to kind of select from. Um, and really, this is a chance for us to tell you some of the things we've got already on there uh, and the market and also for, to let you know the, uh, about some of the ready casks that are there, ready and waiting to be adopted by you. Um, and from these casks, you can get somewhere between 48 up to about, what, 48,000 bottles, did we say, I think, in terms of our uh, range of Depends we on the so, amount, yeah. Not exactly, yeah. So that would be a big gasp, but yeah, we can keep yeah. numbers for, for, for a private yeah. sector, yeah. Yeah, and that and that's the thing. So it's about um finding the right uh, the right cask in the right bottle number um for your needs, uh whether or not it be for a society or for um a corporate need or for you know uh, or even a celebration of a wedding or something like that. Um we've got a variety of spirits available to choose from. So you've got the elegant, you've got our pre-aged elegant. Um, you've got our American oak and our also cask and Swedish oak cask as well that you can put them in. So there's a lot of varieties and different flavors um, that you can have in there. And like I say, uh, I think we can run a little link across the bottom um, to show our ready cast uh, that we've already got for adoption uh, as well. So yeah, if you are curious to see what we've got ready to go that's aging in the warehouse, uh, follow that link down at the bottom there um, and you can check out some of the caskings uh, we've got available already. Um, so yeah, so that's a brief overview uh, of what we've got in terms of ReadyCast available for us. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Milroy's of Soho is one of our key partnerships. Uh, and my colleague Mickey is going to tell us a little bit about those bottlings now. Mickey, over to you, man. Cheers, Cole. Uh, so yeah, who are Milroy's if you've never heard of them? Mil if you've never heard of them, uh, poke your head out the door, basically. <laughs> yeah. Milroy's uh, are iconic in the whisk industry, not just in London and the UK, but they took it a bit globally as well when they first opened. So they first opened uh, in 1964 uh, by two brothers, which are uh, Wallace and Jack Milroy. Uh, they opened it up. They became the biggest supplier uh, of whiskey, uh, not just in London, but potentially the world. Um, and they're still in the same location. They've got a, a basement bar. They've got uh, a ground floor bar and they've also got a shop where they stock uh, a massive, massive range uh, of whiskey. You'd be surprised how much they've got considering it is. it looks quite small. 
but yeah. it's quite cavernous, as it were. Uh, absolutely, <coughs> fantastic, absolutely fantastic place in Soho. Uh, back when um, back when Jack and, uh, and his brother Wallace had it, uh, they started to bottle their own uh, named whiskies as well. So they they become an independent bottler, uh, and now it's back to being independent again after a few changes of hands. Mirrors have looked to do the same thing. Uh, so they, you know, they they like world whiskey as well. So they come to us um, to supply some some casks yeah. for their brand, basically. And which casks is it they've chosen? Yeah, good stuff. So I forgot to mention that too. So they've got uh, a PX cask, uh, a Cloudberry wine cask, yeah. uh, and a Grand Cuvier cask, nonetheless. Ooh, uh, which I do believe, Carl. I do believe you've got a few samples of them. The, yes, yeah. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm fortunate enough to have a couple of samples uh, in and tasting. So this is where you look at me with envy, I guess, Mickey. I'll uh, yeah, have bit. a little taste and samples. Yeah, the, I've I've got the one ready poured. Uh, is the Cloudberry? So yeah, and there's a little image of it on screen now. So yeah, you've got white flowers, stone fruits, uh, with a hint of berry sharpness uh, on the back end of that one. So very crisp, very fresh. Um, these are limited runs as well. So as I mentioned uh, at the start of the show as well, um, these caskings can range from 48 bottles up to sort of 48,000. Um, and this one in particular for Milroy's, I think is a one of 60. Uh, I think we are on the Cloudberry, so very limited run. Um, but yeah, a lovely one. Um, and Sounds good. I am, I am jealous you've got a sample there, mate. To yeah, sorry, you. buddy. Need to, need to get <laughs> sorry, buddy. on one of those. I'd, I'd say let, let's, let's blame the postal service or something like that. <laughs> 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 I mean, why we're doing it. Um, I was going to pour the uh, Grand Cuvée out, mate. Did you want to tell us a little bit about Grand Cuvée? Or, uh... Yeah, sure. So there, I've not got one you. in front of me there, obviously. But uh, Grand Cuvée and Cuvier, uh, is basically the wine before it gets goes on to become champagne. So it's uh, it's a premier wine. So it should give you stuff. Uh, it's like a sweetness balanced with a peppery oak. If you, if you get that mm. on the note, and it's a bit mm. more like that on the, um, on the palate as well. That's yeah. what you should get from it, you know, if you go yeah, buy, like, official tasting notes, etc. Yeah, so it's, it's like um, it's like kind of like a white pepperiness um, with then like, the, kind of, the oakiness kind of comes through sort of more towards the back end of it. But, yeah. Nice. Yeah, a little, little bit sharper. Um, but, yeah, again, another limited run. I think this one's a 1 of 48 uh, as well on this one. So, again... Yeah. These are limited bottlings, and that's kind of the whole idea we're trying to create with these private caskings, with these limited, uh, these, these limited uh, bottling runs. Um, it is a chance to get hold of something that is quite unique. Uh, you know, you won't often see things like Cloudberry uh, out there on the market. Exclusivity. So, yeah. Exclusivity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, right. so, yeah. So, mm. uh, Cole mentioned uh, another company uh, that we've done, uh, done a bottling with, not for, but a bottling with, and that's the Whiskey Lounge. Uh, and for people that Again, haven't heard of the Whiskey Lounge. Uh, the Whiskey Lounge is an events activities company, right? And what they try and do is they try and break down barriers, myths <coughs> uh, with, about whiskey through tastings, festivals. Uh, they also put on a whiskey school as well. Well, that's available on their website, etc. Uh, and they, they do quite a lot of festivals up and down the country, yeah. not just in Scotland, but yeah. they've also got uh, Newcastle, Bristol, London, Liverpool, Manchester, York, <laughs> Nottingham, uh, and Edinburgh. Uh, so uh, the, the, the founder, uh, Eddie, actually travelled across uh, to Sweden with Alex, uh, our gremlin behind the scenes at the moment, uh, <laughs> and selected uh, and selected uh, an Oloroso single cask uh, that was approximately eight years old uh, and bought that. And luckily enough... Hey, you know, you've got that one, we got a wee sample of that one. So, uh, all the Rotho casks, obviously. Mm. On the nose, smells like I want to drink it. Mm. On, on, on the palate, tastes like I, I want to drink some more of it. But if you want to get some <laughs> more official notes, we are getting the soft notes of some raisins, the dried fruits, the typical like Christmassy fruit things that you do get. Uh, with with an Oroso cask and there's a bit of bit of dark chocolate there just on the yeah. uh, on the palate which is lovely. What do you think of that, Uncle? Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. Um, yeah, like you say, Oloroso is a bit. I'm a big fan of Oloroso cask generally mm, yeah. uh, across all whiskies, uh, and I find that is heavily coming through. You've got that kind of like nutty, buttery, kind of rich, kind of deep sweetness coming through on there. Um, yeah. yeah, real nice. Mm. 
Totally. And obviously we mentioned exclusivity yeah. uh, as well there. Uh, so we did another very exclusive bottle, uh, well, a continuing run of bottles actually with uh, SAS, Scandinavian Airlines. So this is very exclusive. You can only get it uh, uh, in uh, served to you in business class or on plus flights uh, in a 50 mil sample. Oh, sorry, in a 50 mil bottle, and you can only purchase it on their in con in con intercontinental new teeth again this week yeah. uh, and <laughs> the in flights uh, in the 500 mil bottles. Uh, it follows the same recipe uh, as our Svensk Eek, which is our Swedish oak. So they chosen that one because they want it to be Swedish, uh, mm. and that's probably the most Swedish product we do because you know. 10% of the, the recipe that goes into Svenska is Swedish oak casks. So yeah. with that, we get, you know, the typical on the nose, fruity with citrus, pear and apple, bit of honey uh, and light and lightly toasted bread tones as well. Uh, on the taste, it comes through a bit more fruity, soft uh, with the citrus and honey. Uh, on the finish is well balanced. Uh, with dark chocolate notes as well. And you do get a touch of spice in there a little bit on the palate as nice. well because of the influence of the Swedish oak, which is, uh, <laughs> which is lovely. So, you know, that's exclusive. You can only buy that with Scandinavian Airlines unless somebody's punted one on an auction somewhere and we can't really control that. So Yeah. <laughs> no, nice one, my son. Um, so, yeah, so I guess continuing the theme, really, uh, continuing the theme of um, limited exclusive bottlings, We've also partnered um, with a company called uh, Brands for Fans. Um, so, the, so the company Brands for Fans, essentially what they do is they work with uh, different music artists around the globe um, and alcoholic beverage companies uh, to create unique bottling offerings um, to, for, for, for essentially the fans, really. It's a chance to uh, own almost like a kind of a bit of a memorabilia, but also kind of consumable memorabilia, if that kind of makes yeah. sense as well. Um, you know, if you really support a band, something you can uh, do is go buy a product, essentially, um, that is has been uh, chosen or created and curated in some way uh, by the bands themselves. Uh, and Matt Mirror sells. We've got a couple of buttons um, available as collaborations with brands. So the first one uh, is Scorpion. So if anyone's a fan of 80s hair rock, um, they're a German band. Uh, and this bottling, yeah, this bottling came about, I say, it's, I, I grew up sort of with, um, my dad was a big fan of Scorpions, uh, so I'm very much familiar with sort of things like Wind of Change and Rocky Like a Hurricane, you know, they're, they're sort of like staple tunes that I kind of grew up with. Are you, are you a, a, any Scorpions fan-ness in you, Lawrence? Is that uh, up your speed, uh, that kind of thing? A little bit before my time, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, no, don't, don't, don't do me like that, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you throw you under the, the bus like that. Well, mate. Do you know what I mean? I... You're the only one with a hair to, I... to pull it off in a Yeah, bit, yeah. You know? That's fair. Uh, but yeah, so definitely th th those two tunes for me that kind of uh, stick out. But yeah, in terms of the uh, in terms of the bottling uh, that we did with those guys, we, we've all got a little pour of it as well, haven't we, uh, today? So yeah. Yeah. in terms of casking, um, it was made in collaboration with the band themselves. Um, and we've got ex bourbon cast at play over here. So from the bluegrass cooperage. Um, so if you're familiar with Jack Daniels, um, a lot of the casking for um, Jack Daniels comes from bluegrass cooperage as well. So you've got this classic kind of vanilla -y bourbon uh, notes coming through. Um, and then you've got a little bit of Olorosa casking in there as well to add a little bit of deep uh, sweetness in there. Um, and then the twist uh, comes in um, with German cherry oak casks. Um, so something very unique. You know, you would have heard of Olorosa, you'd have heard of bourbon before, uh, but German cherry oak or Kirschewein uh, is something that's a little bit different. And again, it's a little bit more unique uh, for Scorpions themselves um, as a band to kind of put their twist on it. Very, very popular beverage um, in Germany. Um, and that adds a sort of a nice little bit of, uh, well, cherry sweetness um, to the mix as well. Um, but yeah, it's a nice way to add a little twist uh, for those guys. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Slight viscosity to it. Yeah, mm. nice. Yeah, as I say, so yes. what, what's your what's your takeaway from uh, this one, Mickey? What, what did you say for this one? Again, you know, it's nice on the nose. It makes me want to drink it. Uh, and then when I taste it, it makes me want to drink more. But I do get some of the things I like discussed in there, uh, you know, some like some brown sugar, definitely the cherry. There's definitely yeah. an underlying there with that, you know. That would be, hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, that, and that's and that's the thing. That's that whole reason, I guess, for using the cherry cask is to give it that little twist, that something different, and also add a bit of depth to the flavour. Um, but one thing is very key to sort of point out when you are bringing in different, uh, unique flavours. I guess you don't want to overpower or something. You want to make sure there's a decent degree of balance in there, and that's something for me. I think that sticks out. I don't know if you guys would agree, but there's balance um, in there mm. uh, in that bottling. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. So yeah, so that's that's definitely something I'd say about that one. Um, and then. Uh, we can move on to our motorhead uh, bottling. Um, so, yeah, you can see it on screen there. Uh, Lemmy, the man himself, the legend, uh, he did actually help out in terms of picking the cask as well for this one. Uh, so, big fan of this one. Um, this was brought out to celebrate 40 years uh, of the band Motorhead. Um, and this one's gone into New American Oak for about five years. Uh, I think we said on this one, about five years. And then it's had six months at the end uh, in our Osso cast. So, again, just to You've got a lot of that kind of vanilla bourbon sweetness coming through and then a little bit of that nutty buttery, uh, deep rich sweetness coming through on the end of it um, from the Olorosa finish as well. Um, so, yeah, like I said, fruity, nutty, such mm, citrus. Yeah. Really, really pick up that Olorosa finishing uh, just on yep. the back end there. I was, I was literally going to say not, like not dried fruit. Not too much though, not too much. It's just the subtle hints of it really. Yeah, mm. yeah. So again, like a little touch of dried fruit in there. Um, it's quite syrupy with a little bit of sultana uh, in there as well. Yeah, mm. delicious. I feel like I'm motoring through. Oh, that was actually an unintended pun as well. <laughs> I feel like I'm motoring <laughs> through <laughs> whiskeys tonight. Naturally um, funny. Naturally yeah. funny. Uh, okay, thank you, man. Uh, and that leads me on to our offer uh, that we're going for tonight's show as well. Uh, if you can see down on the screen below. Um, so if you buy a bottle of Motorhead, um, online today at our shop and use the code crew nation um it is only available on macmira.co.uk as well 6.66 percent um of our, of the proceeds to that bottle will go to supporting crew nations fund uh, so crew nations fund are basically uh, we are going to have as you, as you know a very difficult time in the world at the moment uh, and crew nations fund is uh, there to help um support uh people within the music industry so you've got roadies sound engineers um technicians etc all, all those people who rely uh, on the performance industry uh, for their well-being and their income, who obviously at this very difficult time uh, are unable to, um, I guess, you know, perform uh, doing the thing uh, they love and they, they need to do at the moment. So definitely if you buy, buy that bottle and check it out today, um, make sure you use that code CREWNATION at macmira.co.uk uh, for 6.6% uh, 6 of that will go to uh, the Crew Nation Fund. Um, so, yeah, uh, one little, little tidbit as well, actually, I want to stick in there. Um, Mickey D., um the drummer in motorhead from between 92 i think uh yeah up until uh the band sort of split in 2015 um he he was in Mo motorhead's drummer he is swedish uh and then he went over to scorpions i didn't actually realize that oh, until okay. uh, i did oh. a little bit of fact finding myself yeah that's a cool week I, know that. yeah. Yeah, I, was, I was just doing my research and i was like uh and i read like uh, on the scorpions like the drummer of scorpions mickey d i was like about he's Motorhead's drummer. I'll swear he is. Um, but yeah, he actually joined the band after doing a little tour with him in 2016. Um, nice. So he's Swedish and he's in both bands as well. So full on connections all around there. There you go. Um, so yeah, so just a little tidbit, little facts in case you didn't know. Um, so while we're on that's the a, that's Motorhead, a pub quiz winner, mate. That pub quiz winner. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. Bank, bank that up here for like next time. Um, so uh, Motorhead, essentially, enjoy it however you want to enjoy it. Um, it being something associated with Lemmy, you can imagine there's not sort of many rules and ways that you have to drink it. Um, you know, I'm sure he wouldn't be uh, telling you how to specially drink it himself. Just enjoy it the way you want to drink it. Uh, and on that note, uh, Lawrence is going to take us through a few cocktails uh, with the Motorhead uh, bottling. So, yeah, I'll take it away, Lawrence, if you want to give us some, uh, give us yeah, some cocktails, Mum. Uh, I've actually got three for the price of two for you here today. Nice. Um, yeah, good. We like a bargain. We what? like a bargain. <laughs> More is more. That's it's that's yeah, yeah. more is yeah, more. Yeah. Forget less, <laughs> more is more. Um so the first one's like a little mashup of two classics. So we've got dark and stormy. I'm sure you all know what that one is. Uh, and the other classics are penicillin, so it's slightly more obscure. Um it's normally an unpeated scotch, a heavily peated scotch, lemon juice, a ginger syrup in there, some nice dry spice, and then some nice. honey for some sweetness. Now, this little badger that I've made, gosh, full of cocktails. Um, is a nice big double of the whiskey um, some lemon juice uh, to get that smoky quality in there 
Like Lemmy wasn't just famous for his on-stage antics, his gravelly voice or his whiskey consumption. But he was famous for being a massive chain smoker, just lighting one <laughs> fag off the other. So I needed to get that smoke in there. Yeah, um, no, and I've, I made, like I've made a Lapsang Souchong syrup. So that's really Ooh. easy. Oh, uh, easy to drink. <laughs> yeah. uh, three tea bags, 300 grams of sugar, 200 grams of water, just heated up till the sugar dissolved. Easy nice. peasy. So that gives a nice little bit of sweetness, nice and for its smokiness. And then the whole thing's lengthened with some ginger beer. So it should be like really accessible, really easy, nice, nice crowd pleaser. Um, the smokiness and the gingerness, that should really complement that Oloroso that we've talked about loads, that nuttiness you get from it. And that dry, dry, fruity spice. So yeah, it should be a really good one. Nice, nice. Uh, like a new spice girl, dry, fruity spice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I've got you this little badger. So this is number two for you. Um, What's that you got there, another, So it's just another twist on a bourbon classic. So we all we all know the Manhattan. This is a black Manhattan. Uh, it's as easy as just substituting the vermouth for Amaro. The nice. bitter herbal liqueur, the digestif, that complements the tarragon notes you get out of this whiskey, uh, which really brings those forward. A typical Manhattan's normally whiskey heavy. Obviously, we've been on, we've been having this beautiful weather recently. Yeah. Uh, so to make it that little bit easier to drink, I've actually made this equal parts and served it on the rocks as opposed to just serving it up. So it's just 30 mils of the whiskey, 30 mils of Amaro, two dashes of orange bitters, and a little stir. I've garnished it. They've just sunk because I've taken a mouthful. Um, but I've garnished this with um, an orange wedge and then some olives. So the, nice. the salinity of the olives really brings out and complements that Oloroso that we keep mentioning. And then here's your third one. You can just lengthen that exact same cocktail with some soda water. Just make yourself a delicious highball if you're having like some mates around for a barbecue or something once these limits are all uh lifted it's yeah. a perfect uh, or, or a distant barbecue yeah exactly so uh, two meters away all just sharing cocktails uh yeah, yeah it's a perfect daytime drinking cocktail that one nice whiskey highball nice. Nice. and you can do that with either yeah exactly yeah just, yeah just bang a bit of soda in make it that little bit more palatable and yeah, yeah not get too silly in the sun nice <laughs> that's, yeah good, good stuff man responsibly uh, yeah actually, exactly yeah yeah we should add that in there yeah <laughs> Um, and it wouldn't be a, a midweek whiskey gig uh, without having a food pairing, would it? Um, so, yeah, Mickey, what's what you got for us this week, mate? So we're looking at Scorpions so, and Motorhead. You've got a bit yeah, of pair this, of contrast. This, this week, though, the, the Dorrit's kicked in a little bit, and uh, I need to uh, lay off the scram a little bit. So I've not actually got any. So what we'll do is we'll just talk about what we could have uh, yeah. and, and why why we would have it with that particular whiskey. So we'll start with the Motorhead because we're running that theme at the moment. So with the Motorhead... Um, so I'm going to give you one to complement it and one to contrast it. Yeah. Nice. So the complement for Motorhead, easy bar snack, basically, which is the old, uh, mixed fruit and nut that you get. In, in okay, the yeah, yeah. Et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So those dried fruits that we get, are, are, especially coming through the back end of the Motorhead, et cetera, blended nice. out a little bit with some saltiness in the nuts. Yeah. So That's put tough. all that together, works really quite well with the Motorhead whiskey, I find. Okay, uh, And nice. then to contrast that we'll um we'll put one in for a bit of a light afternoon lunch and we'll go for some sushi yeah uh, as Lawrence nice. mentioned with the salinity and the, on the olives yeah working with it uh, and helping bring it in, in contrasting against the the sweet notes uh, sorry yeah the sweet notes of the dried fruit from the oloroso uh yeah so some sushi so the saltiness of the sushi uh, to go completely against it and and, and you know the yin yang effect, basically. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, so it that's what. The, that's what. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And I wouldn't have thought of that as well. Sushi is like it's, yeah, it's a, a unique sushi one bar, to kind of Friday go afternoon. Nice, you get in there, get some anari out or something like that. Do you know what I mean? And, and a nice wee sip of a a motorhead, basically. Good stuff. Yeah. So we'll go a little bit more indulgent uh, for scorpions, uh, just because of that. That. That cherry, that really heavy cherry room through it. Yeah, yeah. There. So you'd think I'd go for maybe like a, a cherry jam or something like that. No. To complement, we're going to go for a sticky toffee pudding. So we're going to go hey. super indulgent. Yeah. We've just had a nice dinner and we go, I've got a bit of a sweet tooth on. Sticky toffee pudding and a drama scorpions. 
Nice. Just all that sweetness coming together right at the end there for people that have got that particular sweet tooth. Yeah, uh, and nice. then, but then on the other hand, uh, you know, someone like myself, uh, for instance, not always a big fan of a big hit of sweet. So I quite like a, a wee savoury dessert, believe it or not. So I always tend to go for a cheese board. Uh, and what I find then uh, is a nice salty blue cheese, uh, again, okay. to work against that sweetness coming through uh, to even it out uh, from, from the from the cherry cask finish, or well, from the cherry cask maturation, should I say. Nice. That sounds great. Mm. Got plenty to experiment yeah. with, plenty to, <laughs> plenty to go for there. <laughs> it's a pity we have got, yeah, I've got it with me now because I really want to sort of uh, eat that. Mm. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll know for a future. Um, so, yeah, so I guess that's a, a brief sort of tour, I guess, to sort of some of the different kind of brand partnerships we've kind of had to create kind of unique uh, individually bottlings um, as well. And again, oh, like I mentioned, stuff. yeah, and like I mentioned at the start of the show as well, um, you know, we do have casks that are ready to go as well. We've got a number of uh, different casks available to adopt. Um, and we've even got an adoption board, as you can see on the, on the list. And like I said, you've got different caskings involved, Bourbon Oloroso, Swedish Oak, American Oak. Um, so these are some of our 30 litre caskings. Uh, as you can see in this screen here, we'll tell you a little bit about where it's been stored. Uh, so whether it's been the Bodus Mine or in the uh, Forest Warehouse, um, roughly what the alcohol bar volume is going to be, and then roughly what your bottling uh, run is going to be uh, off the back of it. Um, so you've got an idea of how many bottles you're going to get out of it. Um, and again, these things are kind of, these are great for um, a variety of different reasons, really. It's, it's something where you can fit pretty much uh, any purpose. So you've got things like, you know, you've got your corporate gifts, you've got um, protection of whiskey societies, as you can see on screen now. So Brasserie Absinthe is a band, uh, sorry, band. Uh, it's a bar uh, in actually in, in Jövla uh, in Sweden. So near, near the actual distillery itself. Um, and one of the things you can do as well is design your own label. So our design team will work in partnership with you to create something that looks unique uh, and fits the the spec of what you want it to look like. Um, so as you see, we've got the the, the absent there um, in Yevla. Um, we've got one that we did for a wedding as well. Uh, love the wedding between Anakin and Eric. Uh, again, you know, if you're going for something a little bit indulgent in terms of your party favours, um, you know, you don't often come out with a bottle of whiskey. Um, you know, it's usually a little packet of potpourri or something like that. So yeah, a bottle of whiskey <laughs> definitely something a little bit different. Um, we've also got uh, things like. The burst button. Uh, so yeah, again, that bottling was done for. Um, oh, we found this out, wasn't it? It was a, a financial podcast in Sweden. Yes. Um, so yeah. yeah, quite well followed that one. So that's a two hundred liter barrel. Uh, that one. So very well followed. Again, you've got a few more bottlings coming out of that one. Uh, I think we've got four hundred twenty-two out of that one. Um, mm -hmm. And like I say, you can have as much information on it as you want. Um, and then rock and roll. Uh, so Alas Rund um Whiskey is a whiskey society. Um, uh, so they're a Facebook whiskey society based in Germany. Um, so again, like I mentioned about sort of, if you've got a group of people who are like-minded whiskey drinkers, um, that kind of thing, and you want a chance to get hold of something that's sort of a little bit different, uh, a little bit exclusive to you and your group, uh, and fits the spec of what you like uh, collectively in terms of the flavor profile, um, you know, the, the, the adoption casks uh, that we've got can fit that kind of that marker for you. Um, so yeah, so loads of choice to, to to go through loads to look at uh, as i say we've added the links uh, down below um for you there and you can find them in the description uh, and just to reiterate the offer on this week so you buy yourself a bottle of motorhead uh use the code crew nation uh, bang that in at the bottom as well uh, and 6.6 percent .6 will go to the very worthy cause of helping out uh, the guys at crew nations fund uh, to support um people in the music industry um, who are on the background, the more sort of technical side of things um, through this difficult time. Um, so I guess all that's really left uh, for me uh, to say is thank you uh, for being with us for our midweek uh, whiskey gig. Uh, thank you to Mickey and Lawrence for joining us. I hope you had a, a decent you. time on your first one with us. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, we're nice and there. Make sure it's not my last. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%, 100 mate. Um, so, yeah, so we've got loads of shows uh, coming up. You'll see us here next next Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be talking about our gins uh, next Wednesday. Make sure you check out our socials, macmira.co.uk, uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe. Make sure you put the bells on for notifications when videos are coming up. Um, anything else from anyone else? Skull. 
Peace Scott, and love. Got plenty of tricks <laughs> to go through. Take care. Good seeing you guys. See you in the next one. Cheers.